Income tax, 2023-2024. Other common expenses and de minimis safe harbor for tangible property. Get ready and some coffee because we'll need to handle a little perspiration to do income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information can be found in Publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers, Listed Property, and more, Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The Schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula. Noting the Schedule C itself, also basically an income statement having business income minus business expenses which you could call business deductions resulting in in essence net business income which is what rolls into line one income of the formula this formula outlining the calculations on the form 1040 of which we see the first page now the schedule c ultimately rolling into line eight additional income from schedule one this is the Schedule 1, Additional Income and Adjustments to Income, Part Number 1, Additional Income, Schedule C, rolling into Line 3, Business Income or Loss. This is the Schedule C, Profit or Loss from Business, having an income statement format, that being income minus expenses, the expenses basically being business deductions, having more categories of items than most other areas, and some of those expenses are more complex than others, and therefore we might need a de minimis safe harbor to make things a little bit easy on us from time to time. So de minimis safe harbor for tangible property. Generally, you must capitalize costs to acquire or produce real or tangible personal property used in your trade or business, such as buildings, equipment, or furniture. So in other words, when we're saying we're capitalizing these things, then instead of expensing them, we have to put them on the books as an asset. So as we've seen in prior presentation, when discussing depreciation, if we bought something like a piece of equipment for $10,000, what we would like to do is just expense it at the time of purchase because one, that's the easy thing to do. And two, we would get the largest amount of deduction at the point of purchase as soon as possible, in other words. But the tax code, might make us do an accrual type thing, putting it on the books as an asset, depreciating it over its useful life. We might still get much of the depreciation expense because of the special depreciation and 179 deductions, but the general idea is we have to put it on the books as an asset and then depreciate it, which is a little bit tedious to do. Typically, the rule for us having to put something on the books as an asset is if the property qualifies as those types of property, the, the five-year property, the three-year property, the seven-year property, and so on. In other words, usually the rule would be from an accounting standpoint, if it is property that's going to have an impact on more than the current year or more than one year, then you should put it on the books as an asset and allocate the cost over the years in which you actually consume that thing to help you to generate revenue. 
However, from a practical standpoint, that could be somewhat tedious because what if I bought like a stapler or something, which I plan to use my trusty stapler for 10 years into the future. Well, from an accounting standpoint, theoretically, I should then put it on the books as an asset and allocate the cost over the next 10 years, but the stapler only costs five bucks. So it's like, that seems kind of ridiculous that I have to put it on the books as an asset and depreciate it because that's a lot more work and I have to track the depreciation schedules and the amount is small. It's immaterial in relation to the financial statements. So therefore you would think I could do the easy thing and just expense it up front. That's kind of the idea we're talking about here. So, however, if you elect to use the de minimis safe harbor for a tangible property, you may deduct de minimis amounts paid to acquire or produce certain tangible property if these amounts are deducted by you for financial accounting purposes uh, or in keeping your books and records. So in other words, we shouldn't be doing things. The tax code will sometimes mention that we need to mirror the accounting records because if you're not mirroring the accounting records in these instances, it would look like you're trying to deviate from your accounting records uh, in order to do something favorable from a tax standpoint that doesn't seem quite right. In other words, with regards to the stapler example, obviously from my bookkeeping side of things, I would have just expensed the stapler when I bought it. I wouldn't have put it on the books as an asset for my bookkeeping and then expense it when I get to the tax side of things. Part of the point is to make things easier here. So if I did the easy thing from the bookkeeping standpoint of just expensing it because it's a pretty minor dollar amount, that's when maybe the tax code might allow us to do the same thing for taxes so that we don't have to do a tax adjustment, which can be kind of annoying because that separates the books on the tax side of things from the books on our non-tax side of things. Okay. So if you have an applicable financial statement, you may use the safe harbor to deduct amounts paid for tangible property up to $5,000 per item or invoice. If you do not have an applicable financial statement, you may use the de minimis safe harbor to deduct amounts paid for tangible property up to $2,500 per item or invoice. Amounts qualifying under this de minimis safe harbor should be included as uh, other expenses in part five of Schedule C. So one of the problems comes up in terms of where, do you go, where are you going to put these items? So obviously, if I, if, if I looked at the normal categories of a financial statement, if there was a substantial amount in like supplies or office expenses, that's kind of a red flag that because that's the normal dumping ground that people might put like equipment. So if I bought like a $30,000 piece of equipment and I put it under office supplies, that's going to bloat office supplies. We don't really have an equipment expense because the idea of equipment itself means that it's going to be long lasting and therefore on the books as an asset that you're, that you're then going to uh, depreciate. So it would then be depreciated in depreciation expense. So they're saying here that it should be included in other, you know, in other expenses, which is a category on the tax, you know, in, within the tax return under other. Okay, so more information. So for details on making this election and requirements for using the de minimis safe harbor for tangible property, you can see tangible property regulations. So other expenses you can deduct. Now, obviously the, categorization of expenses is not something that the tax code is going to be able to list out exactly every type of expense that you can have, right? Because different businesses are going to have different expenses, but some expenses are somewhat standardized. Most people have like utility bills, telephone bills, you know, auto expense and whatnot, but certain businesses are going to have expenses related to their particular business. If you take pictures of things, you're going to have expenses related to film and whatnot that you're going to have to basically deal with with other which other people uh, won't have which you might break out into its own expense account and that is fine we talked about some of the major categories that have problems with them obviously payroll is going to have issues with them when we put property on the books as an asset and have to depreciate it 
that's going to take a lot more issues. So we focused in on those items. And now we're going to list some of the other items, many of which hopefully will be easier to deduct. In other words, if the bookkeeper did their job properly, we're going to have an income statement and we're just going to input that income statement into the tax return. And hopefully for most of the expenses, we can just take the number from the income statement, put it on the tax return, data input, easy peasy, not a problem. But when we get to those items, those funny items, depreciation and, and whatnot, payroll and whatnot, then possibly it can be a little more complex. All right. So you may also be able to deduct the following advertising notice this is not an exclusive list right if it's not on this list that doesn't necessarily mean you can't deduct it if it's an ordinary and necessary expense related to your business bank fees so obviously the, the fees are going to be common that we're going to have from the bank it might not be a large dollar amount hopefully but uh, donations to business organizations uh, education expenses impairment related expenses uh, interview expense allowance, licenses and regulatory fees, which might be applicable in certain industries. We have moving machinery. Now note that the moving machinery is a little bit tricky because when you first purchase the machinery, you might have to put the installation in the purchase price. But then if you were to move the machinery later, you might have it as an expense. In other words, if you were to buy a freezer for an ice cream shop or something like that, the purchase price of the, of the freezer and the installation of the freezer might be something that has to basically be capitalized. But if you were then to move the, the freezer later, then possibly that would be kind of like an expense. So outplacement services, uh, penalties and fines you pay for late performance and non-performance of a contract. So penalties, repairs and maintenance to real or tangible personal pro property, uh, repayments of income, supplies and materials utilities so once again this is not an exhaustive list you might have more expenses or different categories of expenses depending on the industry you're in but many of these are kind of expenses that we will see in many different types uh, of inventory of uh, industries so when we think about the expenses note that you you have the most kind of leeway on the income statement generally to have different categorizations of expenses to customize your income statement to your particular business and your particular industry on the bookkeeping side to help you to basically make decisions that's the idea of the categorization of the expenses in other words the most basic categorization of expenses would just be to have one expense and just say i'm just going to call it expense and i have income minus my expenses which are just grouped together that obviously doesn't give you enough detail to make basically decisions about those expenses. So you might break out the expenses into categories. Some people break out expenses into too many categories because, because they want to be too detailed and they have expenses with, with dollar amounts of like $5 inside some of the expenses, which seems like it's an immaterial amount and that's going to actually detract from your decision making capacity because you have too much detail and looking at the income statement is overwhelming. So it's to try to find that middle ground of how many expenses you need. And as you do that on the bookkeeping side, on the tax side, we want to talk with the bookkeeping side and think about the categories that are not only best for decision making for the business, but also those that are going to tie into the tax adjusting entries that we might need to deal with to make the tax preparation as easy as possible. Tax preparation oftentimes being one of the primary things that small businesses are trying to do from their bookkeeping perspective, meaning they're doing their best just to make the books and put them together to make the, the tax preparation as easy as possible. So from the tax side of things, we wanna say these are the expenses that we're gonna to have to highlight. This is how we would like to see those particular expenses uh, so that we can make the tax preparation as painless as possible. There will be pain. It's tax preparation. It's, you know, but it is what it is. We're going to try to make it as easy as possible. And then the other expenses that are outside kind of like the norm will be dependent on industry where you can follow basically industry norms typically to see what an income statement looks like and or you can come up with your own kind of expense categories that you think are most relevant and they're going to be relevant if you're spending a lot of dollars on 
a particular item. In other words, once the dollar amount for a particular item gets large enough, then you would think it might warrant its own expense account. For example, utilities used to include the telephone, the, the gas bill, the electric bill, and so on. But if the, if the telephone bill, as it does these days, warrants its own expense bill, which it typically does these days, you might take it out of utilities and put it into its own category. If you have a business where you're growing plants or something like that, and it takes a lot of electricity because they're hydroponic plants or something, I don't know, then, then you would think the electric bill might be something that you'd want to break out from the gas bill as its own category because it's become uh, significantly large. That's something that doesn't matter too much for taxes. I don't really care if you group it in utilities versus gas, the telephone, and so on. That's kind of an internal bookkeeping type of thing, and you can do whatever you want with it. And on my side, from the tax preparation, I can input it as all utilities. I can group them together on the tax return, or more likely, I'll just break them out the way you have them in, uh, on the tax return so we can easily do the data input from one to the other.